So I'm working on this 1586 again. I pulled the relief valve. I'll show you where it is in a minute, but this is, it looks like there's a plug, but it's actually a relief cartridge. It's got an O-ring right there at the back. And then you'll have a snap ring, then this filter, then you'll have this back plate, which hopefully I got right, and a spring. And inside will be this check. It drops down in here. And inside of that check is a spring, a little pintle or needle type seat, and then this screw with an orifice hole on the back of it. Hopefully this is the culprit of my weak loader. I've gained some insight on this function of this hydraulic system. Not a ton. I'm not going to tell you that I know it inside out, which until I know every molecule in something, I don't feel like I have a complete picture. But I have enough to help somebody who's struggling, which, you know, I try to be helpful. So I'm going to pull this fill cap. Now, if you look up in here, if the camera will adjust, I'm going to use a pink pencil. There's what looks like a hex plug, but it's not a plug. It's actually the relief cartridge itself. It threads into that block. It's a very thin, I wish that they made the socket head taller. It's, a, it's very low profile. So that's what we were looking at a little bit ago. And as far as I'm aware at this point, I could be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, that's the overall hydraulic system relief. Now the book just says, if you don't have the right pressure, replace the cartridge. Okay, that cartridge on Messix is like $490. And it's extremely serviceable. Snap ring pliers to take the snap ring apart and pull the guts out um they're all just valves the tapered seats they you know they act as a valve so the spring seat is that that screwdriver plug it's a flat blade threaded little insert plug with a hole in the center and i'm not going to pull it all out now because this tractor's back together but that is an adjustable spring tension for that tiny pintle that's inside of the larger seat and that is how you adjust the pressure how you would test the pressure would be to unhook your couplers, put a, a deadheaded pressure gauge into these work ports. You know, these are A and B work ports for spool one and spool two. And you'd want to run the thing up to a rated RPM and briefly deadhead it and see what the gauge does. It's up to you how much pressure you want to run. The lower the pressure, the less you're going to break front axles, tires, loader parts, implements, hoses. You know, the higher the pressure, you find your weak link. I had a really weak loader, in my opinion first experience with the machine but I thought it should pick up a lot more so I had a weak loader and I had a lot of noise back here now when you put your finger or better would be a screwdriver to your ear or a pry bar to your ear or a stethoscope mechanic stethoscope you will hear fluid when it's bypassing something and not doing work it's gonna be bubbly and squeaky vibration sound it's gonna have a resonance to it so I was getting that chatter back here on that relief cartridge really aggressively uh, pulled the cartridge thought I might have a chunk of trash in it. I didn't, there was no trash at all, but I, I thought maybe that adjustment screw is backing out. And you know, when you've got a screw against the back of a spring, it's obviously an adjustable preload. So what I did was crank it down all the way, which I'm sure is max pressure, and put the thing back together. And now it's quiet back here. So now when I go to a dead head load, which I tried to pick up a 275 gallon tote full of fluid, now when I go to a deadhead load, I get up in here is your hydraulic control valve. Now on this one, the way I've got it hooked up, these two are your A and B work ports for your, let's see, these, this one and this one are your work ports. When you've got fluid, you, you can feel the rumble in the pipes when you've got fluid being pumped through them. I'm guessing right now, I'm talking out loud. I'm gonna say that this is probably the supply line, of high pressure fluid to the pump. These are your work ports. That's probably power beyond to some downstream function, like the brakes or steering. And I'm guessing that that is the return up in there. That rubber hose is going to be a return line. I do not feel any plugs or caps or, or cartridges or acorn nuts anywhere on that valve that I can't see. I don't think it has a system relief valve in the spool block, which is normal for aftermarket hydraulics. But there's hex plugs right in here. Can barely get my arms in much less some tools so there's hex plugs right there in between the work ports and what that's typically going to be is a spool bypass when i hooked up to a load 
that it couldn't lift and just left the valve detented in the lift position, I was getting a lot of flow coming through these two and I'm getting a lot of leakage through the packing. I can feel, you know, you got your A and B work ports. So one is your feed and one is your return. No matter which direction the cylinder is going, it, yeah, they'll, they'll swap, but one of them is feeding fluid and one of them is exhausting fluid. And I was getting a lot of pressure through both of these, a lot of vibration. You could feel the flow through each. What does that tell me? The seal on the piston face is allowing fluid to travel in one side of the cylinder and out the other. If that was not the case, I would feel hydraulic force. I'd have one rock hard hose and the other would feel nothing because it would be basically venting and there'd be no fluid travel. The only way fluid can travel in one and out the other is without the piston moving, without the rod moving is by bypassing the cylinder. But if I leave the loader in the air, I'll come out in the morning and the loader will be on the ground and there'll be oil all over the ground. So if that packing's old enough, then the one in here on the rod end is old enough to be shot too. There's no amount of adjustment that's gonna do anything until these cylinders are rebuilt, 